Right. Hi. So my name is Aditya. I uh, contribute to Fedora project in various capacities. Uh, I have been a package ma package maintainer. Uh, you know, I have contributed to Ansible, Nagios, Puppet, and uh, these days I am uh, I am running around with uh, Project Atomic and certain other cloud cloud based utilities. Right. So this talk is going to be about slightly introduction of what Project Atomic does, what are the components it has. Uh, I'll try to show you uh, a couple of demos if possible um, around Kubernetes, around uh, around Cockpit. So that's the whole agenda, right? Sounds good? Yeah, it does. Okay, so <coughs> So we, we are going to discuss what's the problem that we are trying to solve with uh, Project Atomic and the entire container ecosystem. Uh, how Docker helped us and, uh, and now that Project Atomic is here, what are the components which can help make this scenario even better and we are going to look at all these components, right? So what exactly is the problem? The problem is that my production systems need to be homogeneous. Uh, my environments need to be in sync. For example, if something is working on my laptop, it should always work on QS machine, on staging environments, on production environments. That's what the goal is. That it should work. I need to ship my uh, environment to colleagues, say, for testing, which is a very tedious job. You cannot just, you know, uh, ship your physical hard drives or, or even virtual machine shipping is not that easy, right? Uh, we need to have a stable environment uh, to run containers. We need to have a very lightweight environment. The environment needs to support automation, orchestration. Uh, it should be able to give you the kind of flexibility which you expect out of any automated system. And managing host itself should be very, le very much less of your concern. Your concern should be more around managing the containers itself and not the host. Right, so that that is what the goal is. Right, so we have talked a lot about Docker. I'm just I'm not going to go in details. Uh, we know that Docker is Docker provides us uh, lightweight Linux containers and it boots up really fast. It has API. You can you know incrementally build up containers. You can revert them if required. Uh, you can do a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and uh, and Docker has also introduced us to Docker registries using which we can share the images uh, with our colleagues. We can set up our own pr private registry so that, you know, you have to safeguard your corporate secrets and all those things. So all these things are there. Uh, I'm just not going to go into details uh, because this is not a Docker talk. However, if you want to, uh, if you want me to talk about anything specific, uh, we can please, you know, you can raise your hands and we'll discuss more, right? Right. So, this is what Project Atomic is for me. So, it's it's an umbrella project which combines a lot of other projects which are running in uh, container ecosystem right now. Okay. So, projects like Kubernetes, projects project like uh, uh, now that there's nearly cool cockpit project. There are so many other projects which help in running the containers. We are going to uh, try to bring them all together so that they can work in peace and harmony and we can get maximum benefit out of them. Right? Right. Project Atomic is not yet another project to build yet another Linux distribution. That is not what the goal is. So if you are thinking that probably we are trying to build the next set of uh, Linux host, no, that's not true. We are not doing that. We are trying to build better tool chains which can coherently interact with each other, so that you can get, uh, you know, maximum benefit out of it. Right. So, what exactly is Atomic Host? Atomic Host is a very minimal operating system. It has very less footprint. It boots up very fast. It doesn't have all the tools and utilities which are shipped by default if you download a Fedora image. It will not have a pretty desktop UI. It doesn't ship with GNOME or KDE or any of your desktop environments. That's not what Atomic Host is. 
it is optimized to run for containers. Uh, it uses upstream RPMs of uh, Fedora, CentOS, uh, Red Hat. So you can trust those uh, RPMs. You, you trust all those, all that code that it has been verified by uh, appropriate QA teams. It supports atomic upgrades. Uh, does anyone, I mean, a lot of people know what atomic upgrade is. Do you, do you guys know what atomic upgrade is? Should I explain? Uh, just a little bit. Yeah, so <clears throat> what happens uh, during an upgrade is traditionally you download a bunch of RPMs and you install them, right? Uh, say if something happens in between, if there's a glitch, maybe half of them will get updated, other half will, might not get updated. So that's not an atomic way of doing things. In atomic, the, the entire transaction either goes through or it fails. So what happens is that either your entire update will be applied or nothing at all will be applied. So that ensures that your operating system is always in a very healthy, good, stable state. Right? That's what we mean by atomic upgrade. Right? It has very minimal package uh, packet set, packet set which reduces the attack surface from security standpoint. Uh, very few packages are actually there. Now, it now it means that the entire since the entire update process and the installation is atomic, you cannot do yum install or dnf install my favorite package like Scream. That doesn't work. Uh, you cannot. I mean, you cannot install your favorite packages. That's what. That's what the goal is. We we just want you to focus to run a set of containers and not utilities around it. So, for example, Emacs, no, it's not there. Uh, Screen, not there. Your favorite Apache or Nginx or anything like that, not there. Sorry. So what are the components of Project Atomic? Uh, Docker, of course, uh, it's the core. Uh, that, that's what we use to run the containers. Uh, we have RPM OS tree. Uh, we have systemd, we have cockpit, Kubernetes. Atomic command is, is a very recent, uh, well not very recent, but it's a, it's a on, the, on the development uh, addition. Then we have SPC. I think Dan is going to take a talk on SPC tomorrow, today or tomorrow? Four yeah, four o'clock today. So uh, that would be very nice. Right, so let's let's talk about the components. What's what's RPM OS three? So RPM OS three is a versioned file system tree which is bootable. So for example, uh, I'm sure if you have worked with some sort of version control system while using your coding uh, practices, right? Like Git or SVN or something like that. So this is kind of a Git for your operating system files entire file structure which includes slash boot slash etc slash uh, you know user bin whatever everything is versioned so it so the entire file system if goes bad you can just point it to the previous version and you can achieve a very robust uh, bootable system uh, there are no halfway upgraded system because either the entire tree, uh, thanks to the atomic transactions, either the entire file system tree is updated or nothing at all, right? <coughs> and as, as, and I, as I already have mentioned, we do not package stuff yet again. We use the up upstream RPM from Fedora or CentOS or Red Hat uh, and build the file system tree. Right. Uh, worth noting is that almost all the directories are read only. So you cannot write a file inside say user bin. Only slash etc and slash var are writable. Slash etc because they, that's where you'll keep your configurations. And slash var uh, has a lot of data like um, you know your container images, uh, things like as things like home folders of the users, they are sy symbolically linked to the slash war directory. And uh, so, for example, if you created a new new configuration in, in slash etc and uh, you want to update the system, 
the your your configuration is going to be preserved by using a three way merge of the files so all the new parameters will still be there but your configuration will not get destroyed during an update uh, slash war is not changed at all uh, during an update so you're safe there anything in slash war is just kept as is uh, next component is system d um, system d is the uh, it's the init manager uh, it helps it spawns all the programs during startup and all manages everything uh, all the services and all um, it's highly modular uh, it, and very powerful you can check out lenard's blog here um, i think i'm not a very good authority on talking about system d <laughs> but uh, but yeah uh, so system d is default right now on almost all the distribution that i know it also uses cockpit now cockpit provides you with a pretty web based ui to manage your servers uh, how many of you have used webmin webmin was the name i, I believe one two yeah quite a few so so it is it is what webmin should have been uh, you know very less security holes i'll just give you a, a quick sneak peek on how it looks Can you see this? Right. So, is it visible at the end? Okay, great. Yeah. So, uh, you can see that there are. Uh, it's showing me the CPU utilization, memory. I can add more servers to it. Is the drop down? These are the machines that it's managing right now. Um, let's see. I can probably download more images subject to internet, of course. Oh, I already have a bunch of images here. Yeah, so I can manage a bunch of hosts using a pretty web UI uh, using Cockpit. Right. Right. Installing it on your uh, Fedora workstation is just DNF install cockpit. Uh, installing it on Atomic host is slightly tricky. You need to install a container. Uh, container is actually, I believe it's an SPC uh, because it needs certain accesses, access privileges which are not there uh, to a default container. Uh, best bet is to use Atomic command, which I'm just about to show you. Best bet is to use Atomic command and get your uh, cockpit running, right? It's a client server architecture, you need a client daemon on whatever machine you're trying to manage. Right, so that was cockpit. And uh, another project which I want you guys to know about is Kubernetes. It's a, it's a project by Google. Uh, they are, they have, written a, a lot of code to automate and orchestrate containers so using this you can spawn any number of containers uh, very quickly the idea is that kubernetes you you just provide a bunch of machines to kubernetes kubernetes will decide where your next container should go what kind of resources it should have uh, just in case kubernetes sees something going down something crashing it, it's going to bring that back up so it's very useful to build fault tolerant clusters of uh, containers. We're just going to see a quick demo. Uh, there are a lot of examples available uh, in Kubernetes GitHub repo, as well as there's a very good documentation on how to set it up. So, so uh, that's, that's very uh, easy and quick to do. Let me just go through a simple demo.
Okay, so Kubernetes has a client and a server architecture. So right now the API server, which which will which is responsible uh, to expose the API and the scheduler, are running on my laptop, and the container and the client part of it is running inside a virtual machine. So basically, I'm going to try to spawn up a container. We are going to serve a HTML page. And then we are going to forcefully try to kill the container so that you know we can emulate a crash, and then we'll see how Kubernetes react to the situation. Right? Sounds good. Okay. Uh, let's just see if our node is ready. Yeah. So I have got a node named Fed node, and the status is ready. I'm not showing you how to configure it because you know it's it's very well documented. Just just follow the documentation kind of thing. Um, right. So I have already got this. Am I am I audible without the mic? Great. Right. Um, can you guys see? Right, so this is my specification of the uh, of the container that I'm going to boot up. Basically, what I want to do is I want to boot up this container known as Adivania slash Kubernetes demo v1 v.1. The command which I want to run is slash run dot sh. The container port and the host port is is what ideally you should have done in minus p, I suppose, of Docker command. Now, right, let's do it. Right, so my pod has been created. Let me just see what's the state. Right, so it's not booted yet. Uh, status is pending. Let's see what's happening. The container is actually okay. No way. It went down. Yep, the image is down there. It came up actually, and then it went down again. And then it came up, and then it went down again. Interesting. All right, let's see what's happening. So this is the uh, virtual machine which is running. Okay, I'm getting some sort of error. All right, let me just do
All right. Um, okay. <laughs> well, this is embarrassing. Okay, we'll try to come back to this in a moment because I think it's... I think my machine has gone out properly. Right, uh, I'll try to get back to the demo again. Let's move on to the next thing which I have which is a uh, newly queued project. So what newly queued uh, project do, do is it provides a specification so that you can package your container containerized application. So containerized application I mean to say is that uh, it can have several uh, you know containers by containers application I mean to say that it can have several containers and probably started in a very specific way. So for example you might have a container which is uh, you know you might have have a containerized application which uses say a bunch of containers say four containers uh, web servers database server so you need to provide way of how it is going to be linked what kind of volumes will be mounted so on and so forth so you need to specify that environment now communicating that as a documentation can be a problem sometimes so Nulicule helps in combining all those things and it ships off the entire information as labels so what happens is Atomic command is able to read those labels and is able to replicate the entire instruction set. So all the port bindings, all the uh, you know disk volume mounts, everything can be specified in labels, and all those commands will be executed. So packaging complex applications become much more easier in the, in that case. Uh, Okay, atomic using atomic command you can also upgrade your atomic host roll back to a good known state in case things don't work out for you uh, you can also use atomic command to download uh, fresh images from docker hub or from wherever your registry points to other than that there is a whole bunch of functionality that is coming up uh, on uh, on atomic command uh, Dan mentioned that atomic scan very very soon would be materialized so you'd be able to scan the images for security vulnerabilities uh, and so on right and SPC SPC is super privileged containers super privileged containers uh, they have higher elevated privileges than your uh, than our normal containers uh, they provide debugging tools that you can write uh, on uh, on syslog and all those things using SPC. Uh, there's a there's a another workshop on SPC. I think you should attend that. Oh, I think it's up. Right. Uh, wow, it's somehow it's very slow. What is it doing when you do that? Yeah. Um, so right now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to see if my container is up or not but the command is not returning any output. Let me just free up a bunch of things. Yeah. 
Yeah, my CPU is totally bombed out right now. The continue is up. The continue is up. I think I can go on with the demo. Right. My God. All right, uh, let's just divert the demo to another thing. If I could ever. Cannot control the CS thing. All right. Um, ideally, what should happen here is that right. The page which I'm trying to serve here, yeah, this image should stay, which is it's dying because my Docker is dying again and again due to CPU. But. Now that we see that my container is up, Kubernetes demo v4.1, if I try to stop it, And when it does stop, uh, Kubernetes is going to take a notice of it, and it's going to try to bring that bring that container back up. So it's very useful in building up extremely fault tolerant environments. Yeah. So if I do a docker ps, yeah, so my container is not running right now. Kubernetes will take a few seconds and try to bring that back up.
right? So, yep. So my container is back up. Where is it? It is not here. Right. So the Kubernetes uh, manages that sort of interaction. It also helps you in building very big con uh, containers, very big clusters spread across various host hosts. And right. Right, so that's about it I have. Do you guys have any questions around anything? Any of the projects, any tools? Yep. So uh, you mentioned Google. Where can that run? Is that only a format that's taken by Atomic, or can that be sent to like OpenShift or anywhere else? So NeuroQL is a specification. Uh, it's not. It's not an implementation. It's just a okay. set of rules. That that's how we are going to communicate between different containerized environments. So anybody can implement that specification set. Atomic command is one such implementation, and I, I'm sure in future we are going to have uh, you know many more implementation specific to other uh, container engines. So but right now it's just time. Right. No, uh, I'm not sure where the new tool talk is. Yep. Any other questions, guys? Great. Um, awesome. Then I'll conclude it and. Right. Thank you.